Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello dear friends and a warm welcome from a very warm Scotland from all of us here at Global Vision TV. You know, when I'm thinking about the weather, i am it's never far away from my mind, Just not just how big this world is, but how great our God is. You know, we do nightly Zoom Bible studies and it's the irony of some of us in the UK here have been grumbling lately about how hot we are. And then we have our friends in uh, South Africa who are attending the same Bible study at the same time and they're wrapped up with big warm woolly scarves and so on. Or or it's seven o'clock here in the UK when we're doing it and then we have friends in uh, the Philippines, for example, where it's two o'clock in the morning. Our God is a huge God. It's a huge universe. And yet I'm still struck that we have no idea how many people will not be able to meet up with that God of the universe, the creator God, through the weeks, the days, the months, the years that are ahead and what's to come. You know, we've been sounding the alarm since the 1980s via our sister ministry, BethelCommunications.tv. We made our first documentary about Bible prophecy in the early 90s. We set up this internet TV network in 2005. It was amongst one of the first in the world. We made a movie, which we mentioned last week, which has recently been watched by more than a quarter of a million people on just one digital channel alone. You know, folks, we have to work whilst we're still of the light. Let's go join the panel. Hello again, and welcome to this week's discussion panel. Before we pray, let's introduce ourselves as always. So who do we have? Oh, I've got Marjorie on one side of me. Hello, Marjorie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, viewers. Lovely to be back again this week. And trusting we're going to be led by the Lord and it's going to be profitable to us. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Marjorie. And below you on the screen, we have Brother Gideon. Gideon, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Shalom, I'm Gideon Levitam of the Holy Scriptures in Israel. And I'm just as Marjorie, happy to be back together at that session uh, discussion with you all. Welcome, Gideon. As always, next to you, we have Anton, Brother Anton. Hello. Hello. Good to be here again today. Good to uh, see all the faces and to be able to talk with you. I'm in uh, sunny California. Mm. Welcome as always, Anton. And next to you, we have Steve Lloyd. Hello, Steve. Hi there. It's good to be back with you again. Uh, I'm Steve. I'm Secretary of the Bible Prophecy Foundation and a pastor of a small church. You you had to stop and think just for one second. I could see it. Who am I? I saw that <laughs> cross at you. Who am I? Where am I? <laughs> so, and above you on my screen, I have Stuart Menelos. Hello, Stuart. Hello, I'm Stuart. I'm here in Scotland and I uh, oversee a small church and uh, also oversee a group of men in the Lamplight Study uh, course. And uh, looking forward to what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bless you all. What a joy to be together again. So let's open in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards us. Thank you for the darling of thy bosom, the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. Bless us now as we are continuing in our discussion together, for we ask it in his precious name. Amen. And amen. Well, dear viewers, as always, <clears throat> I need to give a quick introduction as we have new people coming every week. So this series is headed end of days because of the days in which we're living right now. We've spent much time over the months and years looking at some of the errors and false teachings around. We've done a mini series on fear, another on persecution and tribulations, and even how to prepare for persecution in many different ways. However, Everything comes from the word of God and we don't just have all these um, what some people, you know, what appears to be negative views of what the scripture is saying, but also ways in which we can edify ourselves, build one another up and love one another in the Lord Jesus Christ. However, well, there is not really a however, but this week we're looking at making right judgments, uh, judging one another. When do we judge? When do we not? Can we judge unbelievers? What about our politicians, our government, or church elders and leaders? 
When is it right to say that a believer is in sin or a pastor is a false shepherd or a teacher is a false teacher? Or worse, to come close to blaspheming the Holy Spirit by claiming that one of the Lord's own is maybe demonized or operating under another spirit, for example. And we've seen a lot of that happening. So as always, let's see what the word of God has to say, because the traditions of men, our own thoughts are nothing compared to that. So Stuart, what scripture would you like to open with this week? We could say we have two things we need to look at here. Uh, first of all, as we learn to divide truth and error, uh, error uh, be it as we grow from childhood to adulthood, we see the need to make informed decisions regarding any given situation that we might be confronted with in regard to living upright before the Lord. John 7, 24, the Lord instructs, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. And secondly, we need to understand the difference between making informed judgments as opposed to condemning or bringing accusations. We need to understand that the devil is the accuser of the brethren who seeks to divide and then conquer. In Matthew 7, uh, 1 to 2, the Lord sternly warns in his instruction, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with a measure you use it, it will be measured to you. So we see the two approaches. Um, there is considered and careful dividing of truth and error, the purpose of which is to bring forth good fruit. And there is unrighteous, judgmental, condemning, that only seeks to glorify itself. Again, uh, many scriptures can be cited, uh, but if we seek to love the Lord and love the brethren, then our motive will always be to be like our master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Stuart. Oh, again, well, there's not really much more left to say, is there? But we do have to fill a half hour program, basically. So, dear ones, what I'd like to put out, first of all, is unbelievers all right the world is literally full of unbelievers and by unbeliever i mean those who do not believe that the lord jesus christ is the way the truth the life and the only path to god the only way to get to god so how how do we judge unbelievers now let me tell you this is a matter really close to my heart because if there's one thing that people like to pontificate about and make out their experts on is what the world is doing. At Mia culpa, we've all done it. What does the word of God say? So I'm talking about judging unbelievers as such. Now, please, I'm sure some of you Bible teachers know something about it. So I'm going to go to Steve Lloyd. On you go, Steve. As soon as you preach the gospel, you are you are making a judgment and the word of God judges. So if you've got a man who's out on the streets of a city somewhere and he's preaching the word of God and he's preaching the need of repentance, then there is a judgment being made um, because that's what the word of God does, doesn't it? It divides asunder. It, it gets right to the heart of the matter and the matter is sin and the matter needs to be dealt with. And the judgment is where do you stand on that? Very profound and philosophical, but we'll go to Anton and then after that, Marjorie. A very interesting verse in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 5, verses 12 and 13. It says, for what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. Now, the point that, that he is making is that our focus is on those who are inside. That is where our focus is. Uh, it is not on the world. The, 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 the world, uh, God will judge. Now, now, here's the problem, is that uh, we love to preach about the sins in the world. Uh, we, we'll preach about uh, abortion. We'll preach about homosexuality. Um, and it's always pointing fingers to everybody else, else outside. 
while we have very real problems within ourselves and within our own congregations. And we need to, and, and that's the, the, the text that uh, Stuart quoted at the beginning in Matthew chapter 7, deal with your own uh, plank first before you want to deal with a speck with others. Now, I'm not suggesting that the, the immorality in the world is a speck, um, but, but here, here's the thing is that in righteous judging, what is the problem with the world? Is it homosexuality? Is it abortion? Is it murder? No, it is that they are not born again. That is the issue. And that is our message as far as the world is concerned. But the church has now become a center of hate. We, we hate this, we hate that, we hate that, we, we hate all these things. Instead of saying no, we, we have a message. And the message is that God loved us and that Christ died for the abortionist. He died for the murderer. He died for the homosexual. And he wants them to be saved. Um, uh, but our judging uh, is it's, it's really a, a deflection thing because I don't want to face my own um, greed, my own in, uh, uh, discontent, my, my own uh, lust, my, my own uh, suppressed anger and frustration. We judge everything and everyone outside, including the rest of the church, but particularly as far as the world is concerned. I, I don't believe that that is our job. Our job is to love them, to preach the gospel to them, and to get them, uh, to get them saved. Stuart started with that wonderful scripture in John 7, 24. And the King James has it, but judge with righteous judgment. So I believe that's our baseline. All our judgment all the judgments we are going to make must be taken from that baseline of righteousness. And we know that only the Lord is righteous and we only have imputed righteousness. But I do believe that it's very important that we understand what righteousness is. Because I've had discussions with people and they say, oh, but you know, a atheist can be a righteous person. And I... Um, you know, you get people, they're righteous if they actually obey the government. And so there is a misunderstanding. You get into semantics. So first of all, before you can start talking to people about what righteousness is, you have to define it. Because otherwise you talk, you're talking about two different things. And once you start doing that, you start arguing. So get back to basics. Yes, what is righteousness? And I think when we can really understand what righteousness is, and it is seeing things as God sees them and being right with God. And that's our baseline. And unless we use that as a baseline for all our judgments, we're going to condone sin. We're going to condone all sorts of things if we're not using the baseline of the righteousness of God as uh, to, to be our standard by which we judge. And then we can become partakers because we've condoned. Once you start to condone a thing, the next thing you're welcoming into tea. So I really believe that we have to have, with our, with our uh, looking at judgment, we have to have a full understanding of what righteousness is. And then we take it from there and we say, right, how does God see this thing? How does God see it? What does God think about this? And then we can start making a judgment. I'm not saying judge other people. We judge ourselves. We judge ourselves by the righteousness of God. We know we have imputed righteousness, but none of us are perfect yet. We are on our way. And so I believe it's very important that we hold on to that thought of the baseline of all judgment is righteousness and God's righteousness. Thank you, Marjorie. And as was said earlier, uh, we, we really, the scripture is clear about us not judging the unbelievers. Uh, that is God's job to do. And, um, and how often we do it. And then as um, I think it was Anton that brought this up, you know, about judging the world on, um, you know, abortion and all the rest of it. Um, we've spoken about this in the past. Um, really, my understanding is I, I do believe there is a, there are a small number of people that the Lord probably calls and he puts a burden on them, a real burden, perhaps for the subject of, of, of abortion. 
or or some of these other things and these people will be feel really driven to do it now as long as they're being driven by the holy spirit then that's fine however uh, great wisdom is required because the world really is in the grip of the wicked one and that's the truth of the matter the god of this world is lucifer he is he is the enemy and uh, that's just the way it works the world is pretty rotten the earth is wonderful god created it but the world is rotten so i think we've agreed on that the scripture is clear so let's just come back to judging within the church so um what happens if we see a brother in sin a brother or sister a regular church goer a, a congregant a brother or sister in sin uh just to to speed this up a little bit we're in agreement and from what you've all been saying especially marjorie that uh, we look at ourselves first because always i'm telling you if you're pointing a finger at somebody there are three pointing back at you you have to be very very careful uh because with the measure you judge you will be judged stuart read the scripture so once we've checked ourselves, we see a brother or sister in sin the Bible's clear how we deal with it. So would one of you like to share what the scriptures say? The next thing we need to do is we need to obviously pray for that person. Um, uh, tell the Lord before you start telling everybody else. Um, certainly the, the, the one thing that is not an option and that is gossip. Um, and yet that's the, um, uh, the thing that we do. And, 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 and of course we disguise it in a very spiritual way, you know, um, um, uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not gossiping, um, uh, but, but please pray for, for Deborah. You know, uh, she did this and this and this the other day. Um, now, uh, please understand, I'm not gossiping, but we, we must pray for her. Um, <laughs> that, that's the way we count it. No, we, uh, that, that's, that's gossip. But I want to introduce a, a, another step, which is I don't think normally introduced, and that is the idea that having prayed about it, discuss it with the leadership in the church um, before you go any further, because there may be factors that you are not aware of, that the eldership do know about, that they, they, they may be dealing with the situation, they may be addressing it. Uh, go to them first um, and then um, take the next step from, from there on. Wise words indeed. So Gideon, why would you like, just like to take it up from there? The principle is given to us by the Lord in Matthew chapter 18. If you remember the principle that Brother Anton mentioned to us in Matthew chapter 18, as he does say here, moreover, if a brother has, shall trespass against thee, first of all, go to him. Before you are going anywhere else, make the phone calls and tell them, no, I'm not really going to be gossiping, uh, but let me tell you and so on. Go to the person deal with that situation, try to help him, her, them, whatever the situation is, and have this sincere concern for the welfare of the believers. And then it does give us the instruction from Matthew 18, verse 15 onwards, where it says that if he will hear thee, you know, you, you have done well, you know, but if he will not, you know, take another one with you and go and deal with them together. The, the object, this is so beautiful. This is what ministry is all about, and we need really the Lord's help. The object of the servants of the Lord, the object of the people of God is to minister to the people of God. And in other words, to build each other up, to strengthen the faith of the brethren, to help them all, to help ourselves, to grow spiritually, to be more like Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. And to be so, we need to search our hearts, as had been said, and we... <laughs> <laughs> you know, David says, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thought and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me, not them now, me in, in everlasting. In other words, in other words, lead me first of all. But if we are going to help others, it has to have a right attitude. The purpose behind that is to spiritually encourage God's people to help them to grow and to be walking with the Lord. So you told the person, it didn't work, you take another person, and then together, and if that doesn't work, then go to the leadership of the local assembly, share with them, as, had been, as a, a Brother Anton said, if there is some issue that we have no idea about, it's better to, to get counsel from the spiritual leaders, and it is only at the end, 
at the end that we can publicly announce it. And you know, brothers and sisters, and I'm just mentioning it, sin is like cancer. And it seems to be that it's running from place to place, it's spreading. And the responsibility of a godly brother or godly sister is to restore and to spread it as less, to confine it as, as much as possible. You remember Galatians 6 says, If anyone have been overtaken in a fault, ye which are not carnal, ye which are spiritual, restore not push him away or push them away restore such a one with proper attitude and spirit less you because there is a day coming that we will stumble and fall and we will need the grace of god with another help of a brother or person in us in the in in, in a church in assembly to help us to lift us up out of the condition that we may have fall into that's the attitude that we must have if we are to properly examine uh, God's people. Thank you, Gideon. Um, we've got five or six minutes left. Um, there are two or three other uh, strands that come off this. So what happens if you receive um, gossip, if you actually hear of uh, somebody else uh, being spoken about that they're supposedly in sin and whatever. So that's number one. Uh, to Again, just to viewers listening, um, what you may or may not be aware is that most in church leadership um, around the, literally around the world, we know lots of different people. So we have um, a method amongst ourselves of, it's like letters of recommendation. So if a ministry contacts us and say, um, so-and-so is going to be in your area, you know, some speaker or, or a teacher, or whatever, um, would your church like them? Now, I obviously get right out there and do the research. And then Stuart will contact uh, other pastors or leaders, or, or and I will as well, um, where we know that this person may have spoken. And we take recommendation, letters of recommendation. Um, I'm going to let Stuart just speak in a moment, but I, I, just coming back to the very first thing I said about if you hear anything said against anybody else, and there's people in this group that actually know that I do this, Sometimes when you're, you've um, put it out, somebody will come back and they'll say, now, mm, don't mean to be gossiping, but I did hear that such and such, or they teach such and such. I always go to the person and ask them. I'll just do a quick search on the internet first. If it's already out there and it's really clear that they're, they're perhaps a, a name it and claim it type teacher or something, then I, I, I won't even go back and ask them because I will see the evidence. I'm not talking about other people saying they are. Um, I'll have a quick look at video or whatever and we'll know that they're, you know. But if there are other things, always go if you hear anybody making an accusation against another brother or sister particularly in ministry you must you must go to them and ask you must check it out um Stuart um if you'd like to unmute to be great to hear what you've got to say there do never get involved in something that's not your concern stay out of something that's not your concern as was mentioned earlier, there could be things going on you know nothing about. So keep out of something that you do not have the authority to be involved in. Now, for practical advice in regard to people who are in the congregation, not everybody can, um, can speak with clarity. Not everybody is able to uh, deal with situations well, okay? So what I would say is, is if there is a problem and you're in the, the congregation, and I've seen this before, um, and you're a nervous person, perhaps there's something needs addressed, then write it down. Take some time out, write down what you feel the problem is. Perhaps you want to bring forth some scriptures. So you can then have a discussion in private uh, with leadership, or perhaps it's somebody that you need to go to to have something put right so that you can make your point clearly and carefully. It's well considered. And then that way, 
uh, instead of being nervous and, and, and being able, unable uh, to, bring, uh, to bring what the problem is uh, to uh, the eldership or, or to a, an individual, that's one way of doing it. Because often you will see people who they don't know how to deal with conflict. They don't, they, they are unable to have a conversation with somebody where there could be conflict and they get flustered and, and, and the problem gets worse. So that's, that's just one thing to do. Take some time out, obviously prayerfully, and write some things down. If you feel you've got something you need to address, you need to get off your heart, write it down and be very considerate about what you're saying. It would be fine if you're reading it off a list or reading it off a, a notepad. Uh, certainly uh, an elder, any, any elder would welcome that so that they can, they can hear what it is that you're trying to say. Thank you, Stuart. We're out of time, Gideon. I am going to give you a minute, and I'm sure Stuart could probably cut me out somewhere else, but on you go, Gideon. That is exactly what attracts us to the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. Notice what Isaiah said about the servant of the Lord in Isaiah 42. Behold my servant, then verse 3, a bruised reed shall he not break, and a, and a smoking flag shall he not quench. The Lord Jesus, the Messiah, knew exactly how to deal with people. He will never bruise. If he sees something that is bruised, he will always seek to lift it up. If you will see any, a little bit of smoke, he will lift it up, make fire. It only take a spark to get a fire going. That's what attract us to the person of Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the loveliest man that ever lived upon the face of this earth. Amen. So with that, we're going to say bye-bye. Next week, folks, we're going to be looking at I, I'm looking at the subject of what you actually do need to store up in these end days. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. Bye. God bless. Bye. See you next Bye. week. Bye-bye Bye. Bye. just now. Bye. This is GV247.TV, bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, the Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.TV, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. 
Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>